Okay, Mr. Chavez, we are now live. Oh, good. Thank you, Mr. Moya. Okay, folks, let's begin. Uh, good morning. We're on the record. I'm Stephen Chavez, the city's land use hearing officer. Today's date is April 30th, 2020. This is an appeal from the Development Review Board, and this is case number AC-20-6. And as you know, we are under a public health emergency. And because these appeals um, under the IDO are time sensitive, we are conducting this hearing remotely via video and audio conferencing. If technical problems do arise, please be very patient. Mr. Moya with the city will, Mr. Julian Moya with the city will definitely resolve any technical problems very quickly for us. Um, now, as I said before, to prevent possible uh, background noise, Mr. Moya potentially may mute your audio um, if somebody else is speaking. If that happens and you wish to speak, please unmute your audio. And you have to do this through the Zoom program, not through your computer program. Um, it, it won't work if you just do it through your computer program. So um, this hearing is being recorded by a, a certified court reporter, Ms. Destiny uh, Vizaraga is our court reporter. Is that correct, Ms. Vizaraga? Yes, thank you. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes, you did. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now, you know, I, as everybody knows, I've adopted case management rules for these remote hearings, and they were provided to the parties in a, in a previous email. Uh, so this public hearing is also available on the city's government YouTube channel, and it's occurring simultaneously. Uh, now, beginning with Mr. Richard Chavez, who is the appellant in this matter, please make your appearance for the record, sir. Uh, my name is Richard Chavez. I reside at 906 15th Street, Northwest, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 874. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. And we can hear you perfectly, so thank you. Um, I, there are no party opponents in this case, but there are city planning staff that uh, are involved in this matter. With regard to the city planning staff, Mr. Brito, I see you're there. Can you please make your appearance for the record? Mr. Chavez, uh, this is Russell Brito. I am the planning manager for urban design and development and staff to the Environmental Planning Commission. Okay, and uh, I see Ms. Maggie Gould. Good morning, Ms. Gould. Good morning, Mr. Chavez. This is Maggie Gould. I am the planning manager for the Development Services Division and staff to the Development Review Board. And Mr. Varela with the uh, City Attorney's Office um, we'll be carefully watching over this process. So again, good morning, Mr. Varela. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so let's let's begin. Are there any preliminary matters with regard to this appeal before we go to the merits? I'll ask you first, Mr. Chavez. I did, and by the way, I did receive your uh, supplementary arguments. So those are in the record as well, okay? Are there any other preliminary matters that we need to take care of, sir? When you say preliminary, what are we talking about? Well, and I apologize. I know you're not an attorney. Uh, normally, matters regarding new evidence, um, objections to the process, things like that. Um, and, and that's why I noted to you that we did receive your supplement argument, which I have included in the record. But are there any other issues that you would like to get resolved before we go into the merits of your argument? Um, I, no, not really. I just, I really want to address the merits. I, and I know you do, and I'm, I'm here to listen. And by the way, I've, I've read the entire record, so I'm very familiar with the record. Uh, any preliminary matters, Mr. Brito or Ms. Gould? Starting with Mr. Brito, I apologize. No. <clears throat> this is Russell Brito. Uh, no matters from me. Ms. Gould? This is Maggie Gold. No, Mr. Chavez, we have no preliminary matters. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get started. Uh, Mr. Chavez, you have 20 minutes. Actually, you have 25 minutes. I apologize. Thank you. Um, so I understand the city's need to install sidewalks throughout the city. Um, I understand that. Um, but there's a much better way to do that citywide that you could accomplish it in over 10 to 20 years versus what we currently have in place. The current ordinance really is a, creates this whack-a-mole structure. 
Or Mr. Chavez, I apologize. Mr. Chavez, I apologize. Be before you proceed any further, I do need to swear you in, and that is my fault. Uh -oh. um, can you please oh. raise your right hand? Can you see right? it? Okay, it is raised. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and only the truth, sir? Yes, I do. Okay, I, I guess it's my age that's showing. Go, go ahead, sir. I apologize again. Um, so getting back to the whack-a-mole uh, uh, analogy, um, basically, planning department is having to wait for somebody to approach the city uh, for permitting uh, before they can actually address any sidewalk issues uh, in that particular area. Um, so um, my initial request when I approached the planning department was to do a lot, a lot line adjustment and consolidate four lots to two. How that became a subdivision by the planning staff had me thoroughly confused um, because I'd have to adhere to the new development criteria uh, of the uh, uh, development <coughs> review board. Uh, what staff gave me, the options that staff gave me to deal with this situation was either a sidewalk waiver or a sidewalk variance. They were very clear in distinguishing between what a waiver was uh, to accomplish and what a variance would accomplish. In addition to the cost of a waiver versus the cost of a variant. Um, because I had no other options, this is where they were directing me, I selected that I would choose to do a waiver because I did not want to put sidewalk in there. So the fee that I had to pay was a higher fee than the variance fee. Uh, and unbeknownst to me, uh, what I was not told was that the variance fee criteria was going to be the same criteria being utilized uh, for the sidewalk waiver. To me, that was kind of a bait and switch uh, uh, issue because I was never informed that the same criteria for the variance would be utilized for the waiver. To me, they were different outcomes. They were different amounts of fees that I had to pay. So there should have been a different set of criteria for the um, sidewalk waiver. Um, <clears throat> So I'm paying for two items that are supposed to have two different contents, but in fact, uh, they have the same contact, even though they're differently priced. Now, this was obviously confusing for me. And at some point in time, somebody on city council had to recognize that problem because in May of 2019, um, they did an, a resolution that was supposed to address the confusion. I have yet to see that resolution but I submitted my application to the planning department on um, August 30th. I had my first meeting on 9-11, uh, 2019. At no time was that ever brought to my attention that a resolution had been adopted by the city council. Um, actually, that resolution was never brought to my attention until the January 7th meeting that was scheduled with you, Mr. Chavez, at which time they deferred the meeting to another jurisdiction because uh, it at some point in time, it became, uh, they became aware that they were operating under uh, or they were not following the guidelines of the resolution. So, um, I mean, from that point on, the, the, December, the January 7th got postponed to the EPC, EPC and the EPC to now we're at April 30th. So, um, um, what concerns me is with what the planning and DRP is requiring me to install as far as sidewalk is concerned creates a, a serious legal liability for me because of the risk loss factor uh, that would be in place with it because I have a designated tripping hazard now. My sidewalk becomes a designated tripping hazard because there's no continuation of that sidewalk beyond my property. And so anybody stepping onto it in the evening or during the day who's not paying attention could easily face plant themselves on that sidewalk. Uh, if you see what the design is that I would have to do at the north end on 15th Street, if you're in a wheelchair, it basically dumps you into the front of a tree. Um, and if I were to go with a three foot variance, uh, it puts me at the root of the tree. So, you know, at some point in time, those roots are going to evolve. These are Chinese elms. They always do that. And so the, the legal liability that the city is creating for me means that the first time somebody has an accident, falls off that sidewalk, trips on that sidewalk, they're coming after me. They're suing me. And uh, what that's going to force me to do is sue the city because in this process, I'm identifying and telling you, you're making me create a tripping hazard. 
So the legal fees, the legal liability, that becomes, I mean, the city has deep pockets. They can afford that. I really can. Um, if you look at the circumference of my block, approximately three quarters of my block is without sidewalk. Um, and uh, it's, there's no sidewalk across the street from me. Um, there's no sidewalk down the street until you get to the end of the mountain road with the, uh, with the law office. So the irony of my block in that I have um, no um, sidewalk or three quarters of the circumference of my block is without sidewalk. I have a two-story duplex going up on the corner of 14th and Mountain Road. Um, the sidewalk to the north on Mountain Road was paid by the city, uh, taxpayers, and, and whatever funds that were utilized to uh, improve Mountain Road from Broadway to uh, to 20th Street. But on 14th uh, and uh, 14th to Mountain Road, there's no sidewalk, and they're not going to put any sidewalk in for the simple reason there's a utility system. And has some existing gas infrastructure piping there that doesn't require them to put in a sidewalk. So, you know, the, the system of whack-a-mole doesn't even work for, for those type of projects. Um, so, I guess, you know, I'm just, uh, one question I have is, does the city have a process where they can, re, uh, uh, they can recoup their expenses uh, for installing that sidewalk 20 years later uh, for a new development. You know, and here I am being asked to put in a sidewalk that creates a legal liability for me that's going to be an island on my block uh, with no adjoining egress uh, uh, or, or uh, appropriate egress or access because the two and a half to three inches that you're, the, the difference between the sidewalk surface and the, uh, the dirt surface is going to be a tripping hazard. So, you know, beyond that, I, that's really all I have to say. I've, uh, um, I think that you know everything else I've put into the summary, and these are just the additional points that I wanted to highlight. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thanks, Mr. Chavez. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have some questions for you, Mr. Chavez. Sure. Okay. So, uh, how long has the the structures? I guess they're they're homes, correct? There, there's two buildings on the property now. Correct, sir. Okay, so is it two different homes or is it one home with outbuildings? No, it's two different dwellings. Um, the first one, the original, was built prior to 1850. That's my parents' house. I built uh, the second edition in 2004. So uh, this uh, second edition has been in place since 2004. Okay. And it's, uh, it's essentially four lots that are creating one, one lot. Correct. Correct. Okay. And, and I'm requesting. I'm, go ahead. No, I was just requesting to adjust the lot lines. There's no development taking place. There's no infrastructure being introduced. There's nothing being demolished. Uh, the only thing that I would be erecting would be a fence to separate the two properties. That was my next question. So your request initially was to was to uh, delete some lot lines so that you would create or actually create a lot line um, to create two separate lots for each home? Uh, correct. So it was consolidating four lots to two so that I could separate the two houses. I see. And um, you said one home was there since pre-1900, 1850s, you said? That's correct. And the second home was constructed in 2004? I got the CO in December of 2004. Okay. Um, are you, um, is it your intent to change the, uh, the building structures? Uh, are, are you going to expand on those buildings at all in this application? No, sir, I'm not touching these buildings at all now. At, no, no. So the, the, the intent of your application was to create uh, two separate lots and nothing else. That's correct. Okay. And, 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 and the, the purpose is, is important here in, in my analysis of the IDO as it states now. So the purpose of, of, this, of this creation of two separate lots, is it for financial reasons, for mortgage reasons, things like that? 
Uh, exactly. For mortgage reasons, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Brito, uh, Ms. Gould, I I'm going to allow you questions of Mr. Uh, Chavez, but I would need to square you both in first. So let me do that. Uh, Ms. Gould, can you please raise your right hand? Mr. Brito, raise your right hand. Do you f both affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and only the truth? Yes. Yes. Okay. Do either one of you have questions for Mr. Chavez? First, Mr. Brito. Uh, Mr. Chavez, this is Russell Brito. I have no questions for Mr. Chavez. Th thank you. Ms. Gould, any questions for Mr. Chavez? This is Maggie Gould. No, I, I have no questions for Mr. Chavez. Oh, good. Thank you. Okay, so I, I have a lot of questions for you folks, but I'd like to hear your take on this issue. Um, either one of you can begin, I suppose. Um, so this is Maggie Gould. Um, so Mr. Chavez, I think the, the first uh, thing is that for all cases, anytime you change the lot lines, we call that a subdivision action. And so if it creates 10 or fewer lots, it's minor, um, 10 or more lots or major infrastructure, it becomes a major request. This is this was dealt with as a minor plotting action. Um, and when you change something, you are subject to new rules. And so although what Mr. Chavez is doing is deleting the existing lot lines and creating a new lot line, he's changing the existing configuration. And by doing that, he then needs to bring that, that parcel up to the current standards. And Mr. Chavez's parcel was treated the same way we would have treated any other comparable request. Okay, so uh, I understand this. I saw something in the record that this is the way it was. Be, it's always been done. Uh, I think that there was testimony in front of the EPC or the DRB. I can't recall now that we that the city has done it this way in the past. Is is that correct? Yes. This is this would be the standard procedure. How would you consider? Uh, first, I guess my question is: Do you agree that? Mr. Chavez is not creating a development for purposes of, of how that term is used in the IDO? Um, Mr. Chavez, give me a moment to actually check that definition in the IDO. It's on page 456 of the IDO. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I asked the question is because Mr. Chavez has made that argument. So, and I'll read the definition of development in simply so that we have it in the record, which says any activity that alters the ground on a property, development may include construction of buildings, structures, or streets, installation of landscaping, infrastructure, utilities, or site features, and or activities to prepare land for such construction or installation, such as grading. For the purposes of this IDO, this, this term includes new development and redevelopment on existing lots. And so I guess this is where I would like some input from perhaps Mr. Varela, and this is where I also wish we had somebody from code enforcement and Mr. Brito is welcome to weigh in, but I mean, so Mr. Chavez said he would be constructing a fence. That would be a site feature. Um, in terms of development, there isn't, there isn't going to be a new building. But again, it is, it is a change to the existing, to the existing way that this this chunk of land has behaved for most of its history. That that would be, and again, I will def I, I would defer to to legal on that. But okay, so you consider it um, to meet the definition of development under this definition in the IDO on page four fifty six. I'm I'm not entirely sure. Okay. I mean, that's why I'm sort of I would I would leave, yeah I I'll, I'll turn this over. I'll defer to Mr. Brito on this. Well, I have more questions for you, and then I can Certainly. ask Mr. Brito. The, would you consider um, Mr. Chavez's site features um, around his property, the fact that he doesn't have a, a sidewalk, 
is is that a non-conforming site feature, Ms. Gould, under the IDO? Again, I'm going to look at the definition of a non-conforming site feature. So um, you folks haven't I, looked at those those issues in in routing Mr. Chavez's application. You haven't so looked what, at whether this is a non-conforming use or a development for purposes of this application. No, because what, what Mr. Chavez was asking for was a subdivision action. And so that's the way that this request was evaluated. And it was evaluated, as I said, in the same way that we would have evaluated any other subdivision action. And so because he wasn't coming in with a building permit or a request to change his zoning or anything like that, we weren't looking at we were looking at whether or not those lots met the appropriate lot size and then looking at setbacks and existing features in terms of their proximity to the public right of way, but not, I mean, the residential isn't allowed use, but, but not the non-conforming features. Got it. So, so what triggers, if you're looking at it as a, as a subdivision, which I agree, under the state statute, it's technically a subdivision, um, a summary review subdivision under the state statute, which really isn't applicable here because the city has the authority to, um, to, to do things a little differently. Mm -hmm. And there's, a, there, there's ordinances for creating subdivisions. Um, so if we look at this in terms of subdivision, what would trigger under the IDO or the DPM uh, this process that you're making him follow. So create, Mr. Travis, I create a new sidewalk. Right. So I would actually like our transportation engineer to address the, the DPM standards on this sidewalk. Okay. Is he here? Yes. That's, that's Mr. Grush. I don't see Mr. Grush on the, on the, on the access um, panel. Mr. Grush, are oh. you there? Uh, yes, I am. Good, good, good. I'll, and I'll get to you shortly, sir. I'm just trying to narrow down with, with Ms. Gould and then we'll move on to the, to the issues that, that you can address and that Mr. Brito can address. So thank you. Um, Ms. Gould, I have still have more questions for you. So how did you look at this application then? Um, I mean, you've said that you've looked at it in terms of a subdivision uh, and, and you can't tell me what triggers the analysis requiring a sidewalk, or can you? So the, the analysis, so the, the, the development review board, I think, as you know, is composed of a representative from several different disciplines. And so for, it's the transportation division that's gonna be looking at those, kind of those sidewalk infrastructure triggers. What planning is generally looking at is the overall process. And we are looking at things like, are there existing structures on the property? Do those structures meet the setbacks? By creating this new lot, are we going to create a non-conforming setback that then the applicant will need to go to the ZHE and deal with? Um, and we're looking to our transportation colleagues to look at things like um, encroachments into the right-of-way, the provision of sidewalks, the provision of appropriate right of way, the provision of appropriate street width. So in terms of looking at this, each, each member of the board is looking at their, their specific area of technical expertise. Okay, so with, with your area of expertise um, would be looking at whether or not Mr. Chavez was creating non-conforming uh, site features with this lots of yes. And, and again, we do that. The, the reason that the board is a consensus board is that you are looking at each member to provide their technical expertise and to have a discussion about whether overall this project meets all of the applicable requirements. Sure, I understand that. But my okay. question is relating to whether or not this lot split would create a non-conforming site feature. Did right, you, and my that, understanding is the-, let me, the my, my, let me finish okay. my question, if you will. Did, did you determine if this lot split creates a non-conforming site feature, such as setbacks or something else? Um, I would have to go back carefully through the record, but my recollection is that no, this this lot will give um, enough space around each one of those buildings that there would it would not nothing would be made non-conforming by the addition of the new lot line. Okay. 
Great, thank you so much. Is there anything else that, that you'd like to add, Ms. Gould? Not at this time. Okay, Mr. Chavez, do you have cross-examination questions for Ms. Gould? And I, I, in, in asking you this question, I will limit you to cross-examination questions, only questions, not argument, regarding her testimony. Sure. Um, the first question is, um, state um, statutes um, under Chapter 3 Municipality Section 3-20-8, alternate summary procedures, has a very specific uh, process in place uh, for cases such as mine. And, uh, at, uh, and, and what they call it is a resubdivision because my property has already been subdivided. So I'm not sure how you define a, a, a property that's been subdivided as a, as a new subdivide. So in, in, the, in the fact that the city is a home rule and can address their statutes accordingly, it's my understanding that when the state has a statute in place, the city has Mr. not... Mr. Chavez, I need to interrupt you. This isn't the time for argument. This is only the time for you to ask questions. You can, you can, re the, you can rebut let these me be, issues later, okay? Can I rephrase the question then? Sure. Uh, why is the planning department not adhering to the state uh, statutes for um, uh, municipality subdivisions? That's the first question. Okay. The second question. Well, let's 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 exactly. let's let's stop you there and and let's just address the first question. I can answer that question okay. for Ms. Gould, and because I can tell you that the city has the authority, the lawful authority, to create its own subdivision criteria as long as it's not inconsistent with the state law. And and I can tell you right now, I would find that that their subdivision process is not inconsistent with the state laws. Um, it, it's actually very consistent. And so the, the issue of whether or not you're creating a subdivision technically is, doesn't get you anywhere. Um, I, I, I have a lot of other questions regarding this process, but you are creating a subdivision by creating two new lots out of one lot. Um, and so, and the city has authority to look at it as a as a subdivision creation. But I guess the question that I have hasn't been answered yet, um, and I'm hoping it will be shortly, but it's and whether or not that process triggers a requirement for new sidewalks. So, but anyway, go ahead with your questions. Your no, so I, I, I understand what you said and I accept that. Okay. Um, the second question is, you know, the, the, the planning department continuously tried to direct me to uh, submitting for a variance. Um, they, they, I mean, it was an ongoing process from the very beginning. They were trying to get me to do a variance. My question is, uh, if that was the case, why was I not given the chapter 12 introductory summary to the uh, sidewalk ordinance, which actually stipulated nine different criteria that would, would, would uh, con constitute as an exemption when the initial uh, procedures that you provided to me only provided one of those nine. Why was I not given that app, that information as part of the application process? Ms. Gould, do you understand so, the question, Ms. Gould? Can you answer? Um, I'll, uh, Mr. Chavez, yes, I believe so. So there, there are two, there are kind of two issues here. Issue number one is Mr. Chavez's application. We were looking at a waiver being the ability in the IDO to completely waive the requirement for a sidewalk. And so that the criteria that we were using was the IDO sidewalk waiver criteria, which had been amended with the, the DRB decision dealing with the DRB and clarifying that we weren't a quasi judicial board. But so we were looking at a waiver being a waiver to the complete IDO standards and providing a sidewalk as opposed to a variance being a variance to the development process manual, which would, which would be a waiver to that sidewalk width. Meaning that since Mr. Chavez currently has a non-standard sidewalk and a four foot sidewalk would be required, he could ask for a variance to that width to be allowed to keep his sidewalk, which I believe is closer to three feet. And it was later when we went back through that criteria and realized that 
part of that clarification of the DRB process and whether or not we were a quasi-judicial board had amended that um, section regarding waiver and variance and had removed that sidewalk waiver criteria. Thank you, Ms. Gould. Mr. Chavez, next question. Well, I never got an answer as to why they didn't provide. Mr. Chavez, you're, you're, you're stuck with the answers that you get. Um, so you need to move on with your next question. Okay. Um, for right now, no, I don't have any more. Okay. Uh, will I be able to have another question if I choose to? I, I allow you some flexibility, certainly, as we move on. So, Mr. Brito, uh, uh, that, that was just for Maggie Gold questioning. You can question the other witnesses to testify, too, uh, as we proceed, okay? Let, let me go to now to Mr. Brito. Mr. Brito? Yes, Mr. The Chavis. Thank you, sir. The, the question I had earlier um, for Ms. Gould wasn't answered, and she kind of deferred to you regarding what process triggers the, um, the requirement for a sidewalk or why, uh, what gives rise to the requirement for a sidewalk in the IDO when this is just a, a lot split essentially. So, and, and, and I think we've, we've agreed, maybe we haven't, but it sounds to me like the evidence shows that Mr. Chavez, Mr. Richard Chavez is not creating, not expanding on any of the buildings, the structures on his property, and he's not creating a, a, a non-conforming site feature with the lot split. So the question is essentially what gives rise to the requirement of new sidewalks in the IDO with a subdivision lot split? Well, Mr. Chavez, <clears throat> uh, first in regards to the definition of development, it includes uh, preparing land for development or redevelopment. Uh, well, actually, it, it, that's not what it says. It says it, 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 it includes preparing land for, the, for construction or installation um, of, of, the, of the activities, of the uh, utilities that it speaks about earlier in, the, in that sentence. So we, I think that, do we stipulate, is there a stipulation that there is no new construction or, new, or no redevelopment of the of the buildings. Well, Mr. Chavis, um, as the appellant stated, the reason that he wanted to <clears throat> subdivide the property into two lots was for the purposes of refinancing, uh, having to do with a mortgage. Um, even though he might just be refinancing, uh, there's always the possibility that a uh, refinance could be for new construction. It could be for uh, upgrades to an existing building. It could be to demolish mm -hmm. uh, an existing building and redevelop the site. Um, and subdivision makes that financing process more palatable for banks and uh, cleans up <clears throat> not only the city's uh, zoning map in terms of city lot lines, <clears throat> but assists the county assessor uh, for ownership uh, purposes as well. Okay, so I, 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 that's fair. I mean, a little, a, a bit speculative, but that's a fair answer. Uh, if, if assuming that's true, and if Mr. Chavez is, is, um, splitting his lots so that he can get financing for redevelopment of the existing buildings. Certainly that would require uh, new sidewalks, but wouldn't you agree that to, if he did that, he doesn't do it all in, in the application for the subdivision. He, he does it in a separate application for site design and things like that under the IDO. I mean, new construction requires a separate process, correct? And, and if so, couldn't you require sidewalks in that process? It seems to me that's what the IDO clearly contemplates, that you can pull him in for, for um, meeting all the requirements of the IDO, including sidewalks, if he's redeveloping his property or reconstructing the buildings, expanding the buildings or, or tearing them down 
raising the buildings to create it to create two new maybe apartments. I'm not saying he's doing that. I'm saying if he were doing that, there's a separate process that you would bring him into the system to provide sidewalks. Is that is that something you would agree to? Um, I mean, is that Chavis, something that you is that analysis um, accurate? I suppose is my question. Mr. Chavis, I would agree that that is another process mm -hmm. for the city to obtain required infrastructure adjacent uh, to uh, properties in the city. Okay. The um, IDO in 17B, uh, development on approved lot or parcel required and that's on uh, page three of the IDO. Subdivision I of land, um, as I speculated earlier, um, because when we look at these proposals, we're not looking at, well, what can happen now and what can happen immediately. We also have to consider what can happen in the future. What if, um, uh, the appellant decides to sell off one of the properties uh, after the subdivision is completed. And uh, that new owner is also required by the sidewalk ordinance to have sidewalk constructed uh, at the owner's expense in the city public right of way. And it is required, you know, required infrastructure improvement. And in 17B2E, uh, the city engineer has to confirm uh, that infrastructure improvements uh, have been constructed uh, before they are transferred to the city. And that again, a, we're looking that, ahead to the future to see, is it a possibility that this is going to be, be developed and is this an opportunity to implement the requirements of the sidewalk ordinance? So, so Mr. Mr. Brito, none of those sections answer my question about what triggers, what gives rise to requiring sidewalks with a, with a lot split. It, it be, I mean, I, do, I mean, if, 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 if 17B is your answer to that question, okay, I'll, I'll leave it alone, but I don't see that as an answer to the question. Um, is there any other provisions in the IDO or the DPM that, would, that, that I should be looking at to, 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 to really answer or to respond to that threshold issue in, in my analysis of, of this appeal? Is it just 17B, Mr. Brito? Uh, you could also look, uh, Mr. Chavis, at 18B, which is just on the next page, page four of the IDO, uh, the IDO's relationship to other regulations. If any regulation in this IDO conflicts with other applicable laws or regulations of the city, um, um, I, I think part of that review of IDO actions like subdivision, we're kind of also, it's a, incumbent on staff to look at other applicable uh, regulations like the sidewalk ordinance. And is this an opportunity? Is this a catch point uh, for the city to get that required infrastructure <clears throat> on a lot within the city? So what, again, uh, I, I don't see how 18B resolves that question because the, the catch point, as you say, is a, a essentially splitting, splitting a lot and nothing else. There's nothing else that's going on here. I mean, it's not a vacant lot that he's splitting for, for construction of a, a new development. And it seems to me that's what the IDO speaks about is development that brings you into this system. Um, it, it, let me ask you this question. What about a non-conforming site feature under section 6-8G? It seems to me that, that the lack of sidewalks, certainly we, we can all agree that the city of Albuquerque has an interest in, in making sure that sidewalks 
are meshed throughout the city, but because we don't have sidewalks on Mr. Chavez's property, and there's, there's out, certainly other areas, old areas in the city that don't have sidewalks, is this a non-conforming site feature of Mr. Chavez's property? Uh, Mr. Chavez, uh, I would look at it as a non-conforming feature. Uh, the sidewalk ordinance requires all property owners uh, to install and maintain sidewalks adjacent to their property in the public right of way. I, I, but but that, that's not what the, this section says at all. I mean, there are criteria for um, non-conform. If you, if you do consider it a non-conforming site feature, there are very clear criteria in the IDO for how improvements are or how making those non-conforming site features no longer non-conforming. And if you think it's, and if you agree it's a non-conforming site feature, boy, I tell you, I, I'm not so sure that Mr. Chavez needs to provide sidewalks under this analysis in, in IDO section um, 6.8 for non-conforming site features because he's not expanding a building He's not, he's not changing anything in those buildings. He's not creating new non-conforming site features. Um, Ms. Gould testified to that. So I'm gonna look at that very closely, but, but if, is there anything else you, you would like to add to this? Well, Mr. Chavez, um, <clears throat> that's one of uh, the issues that we have to deal with, with infrastructure like sidewalks that are in the public right of way. Uh, the DPM is very specific about those requirements and what standards and technical standards have to be applied for that infrastructure in the public right of way. Um, it references the sidewalk ordinance which requires adjacent property owners to construct and maintain the sidewalks. But that's in development, but that's when there's development. It's, we're talking about an existing lot that's already developed. There's no intent by Mr. Chavez to develop any further those lots other than subdividing the lots. And, and the definition of development under the IDO seems to be fairly clear about what qualifies for development and, and subdividing a lot I, I'm not so sure meets well, that. The sidewalk criteria. ordinance, uh, Mr. Chavez, the sidewalk ordinance is applicable to all properties in the city but, of Albuquerque. Whether but it's only or isn't it development. only applicable for development? I mean, it's not, I mean, sure, we have an ordinance, I guess the sidewalk ordinance says you have to put sidewalks in. But I guess I, the, the, the question before that is what criteria brings these people in to this ordinance and there has to be i mean there has to be criteria and because there's lots of properties around albuquerque that don't have sidewalks um that are already completely developed that have been there for many 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 years like mr mr chavez's property and so if 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 if, if it's that cri if it's that ordinance it says you have to have sidewalks no matter what, then, you know, then is this selective enforcement or is there a process that brings him in to the, to the, to that process? And it sounds like that because he submitted an application for subdivision, that that's the process that brings him in. But I can't yes. find anything in the IDO that supports that. I really can. I've looked uh, and I'm going to look harder. And I understand the DPM is there and I haven't looked at the DPM yet, but the DPM is a deals with how sidewalks are brought in. And that is how we create the sidewalks, the, the technical minutia of, of sidewalks. It doesn't go into the analysis to bring these people into the fold. And, and so I, I and it, but non-conforming site features seems to bring people into the fold, um, but only under certain criteria. And I don't see how Mr. Chavez meets that criteria with just a lot split. And I might be wrong and I'm gonna look at it a lot closer, but it seems to me that the non-conforming site features 
have to become conforming at some point if you do certain things, if you expand the non-conforming uses or the non-conforming site features, or you create new non-conforming site features. That's what seems to be the intent of the non-conforming um, uh, regulations in the IDO. So I, I, I had hoped you could give me assistance in finding out how Mr. Chavez has brought into this fold and you're, you're kind of circumventing straight to the ordinance that requires sidewalks. And I don't think that does it, um, but, but um, reasonable minds can differ. Yes, Ms. Gould. So Mr. Chavez, if I may, two things. One, uh, the, the record from the EPC hearing does contain a discussion of the, the importance of the sidewalk ordinance that the city can ask for those sidewalks anywhere in the city that they are required. And so the city could ask, you know, Mr. Chavez had brought up two different ways to have these sidewalks. The sidewalks can be funded because the city does them, they can be funded individually. Um, but because as Mr. Brito brought up the sidewalk ordinance, the city can ask for that sidewalk at any time. Um, what, what, what provision requires that specifically? Tell that's, me, that's, that that is, that that's in the, that's in the sidewalk ordinance. And, um, and what, give the, me the second thing you. that I would like to, to before, add is I would like to, before, um, Ms. Gould, hold sorry. On. Before, if you could give me the citation for the sidewalk ordinance. Um, I need to dig through the record for that. If you will okay. give me a moment. Um, Mr. Chavis. Yes. Um, that's a uh, six, five, five, one is the sidewalk ordinance. Okay. And is that, um, on the, um, I guess is, is that accessible to me? Uh, yes. Uh, if you go to amlegal.com, yeah. amlegal.com, the, the city's code of ordinances are all contained on amlegal.com. And it's, and it's the, the general heading is sidewalk ordinance or does it yes. have a general heading I can access first? I, I believe mm -hmm. so. That's the uh, short title is the sidewalk ordinance. Okay. And, and I note for the record that, that, that there was reference to this provision in the EPC um, uh, 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 debate. And I will include that ordinance into the record um, as a matter of reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Chavis, if I may, the, the two more things. One, um, I think it would be very helpful to hear from transportation on this. And two, um, because we don't have the ability in this hearing to confer with other staff and because the chair and the city engineer were not allowed to give testimony, um, I would also like a brief break to take a minute to confer with them as well. Absolutely. And we could hear from Mr. Grush first or we could hear from Mr. Grush after that. I will leave that up to you. Okay. Um, do you, would you like to take a break now and discuss if, it? If, 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 yeah, if I could, if I could have like five minutes, that would be great. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go off the record for five minutes. I think Mr. Moya leaves the, um, the, the public access YouTube um, on, Conti it runs continuously. So, so turn off your cameras or else people are going to see you. Um, and, and we'll take a five minute break. So we'll go back on the record at 9.55 a.m. Okay. okay, thank you so much folks. Thank you.
Okay, is everybody back on? I see Mr. Grush, I see Mr. Brito. Um, our court reporter is here, Ms. Gould, are you on? Yes, okay. Mr. Chavez. Good, good, okay. So um, we are back on the record. Mr. Um, Mr. Moya, are we back on the record? Yes, we're good to go, Mr. Chavez. Good, good, good. Okay, okay. Um, Ms. Gould, go ahead. So, so just a just a couple of things, um, and I think we've we've brought this up kind of as part of our process. But again, um, and I think I think kind of Mr. Breacher went through this a little bit. But again, he's he's asking for a change, and so when you come in for a change, that's gonna that's gonna trigger new requirements. Um, you know, and again meeting the standards of the development process manual. And I'll let, I'll let Mr. Grush answer kind of the more specifics of this, but the development process manual does require specific sidewalk widths. It per, requires specific roadway widths. It requires specific paving widths. And so we, we would consider, you know, that's, that's where we would see that trigger. The other part of it is, um, you know, he will have to, he will be constructing improvements on that property. Like he said, there's fencing that he, he would, do to separate these two lots. The other thing is he has Ms. Gould, existing- let me, stop, let me stop you just for one second. I apologize. I wanna make sure Mr. Chavez is on the line. Mr. Chavez, are you on the line? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Did, you, did you hear all this? I apologize. No, yes, I did. And, and if uh, if constructing a fence constitutes that, hold, I won't construct- Mr. Chavez, hold, hold on. This isn't a time to, to argue. Yeah. I'm going back to Ms. Ms. Gould. I just wanted to Wait. make sure that you're on the line. Okay, okay. thank you. And th so the, the second thing related to that is that he has he has existing private infrastructure in the public right of way. He has existing fencing. So that's also going to have to be moved in order to in order for him to go ahead with the project the way that, that he wants to. So that's I think it's another thing to think about in terms of this lot is not going to be left exactly the same way that it has been forever. He's in order to do this, this subdivision, he's going to have to make some changes. So um, his, fence, his fence is something that would trigger this. If he were just moving the fence. Right. I mean, again, we are, I think we're going back to, we're going back to that and we're going back to the, the requirements in the development process manual for specific infrastructure. Um, what kind of fence is it? Is it a is it a brick fence? Is it a picket fence? Can you I, tell me? I believe it's wooden. And how tall is it? Chain link fence. Okay. Okay. Well, Mr. Chavez, I'll, I'll ask you that. Remind me to ask you that question, or just tell me mm -hmm. later when you can offer. But, the, uh, but Ms. Gould is still on. Right. And so, so that's that's going to have to happen. And and again, I would go back to what I said at the very beginning of this, which is. This application was treated like any other similar subdivision application. And I think at this point, it would be helpful to, to hear from transportation kind of about their, their process with this and their process with the DPM. Okay, thank you. Mr. Grush, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Oh, good. And for our record, this is Matt Grush and I have sworn you in, haven't I, sir, or have I not? No, you have not. Okay, but please raise your right hand, sir. Uh, do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and only the truth? Yes, I do. Wonderful. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, do you have a question? I, I don't. Miss Gould may have a question for you. She's the one that pulled you into this system. Right. Uh, so, uh, what? What, what it sounds. What Mr. Chavez is after is kind of the the when we review these subdivision plats and we're reviewing them for current infrastructure. So sidewalks, roadway width, paving width, the, my understanding from conversations with Ms. Wolfenberger and her predecessor are, we are looking at those DPM standards and we are applying those to these new subdivisions. Yes, that's correct. school yeah that, that 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 was the the clarification and so in in determining 
when we review these plots, whether they're major plots or minor plots, the transportation division and also and the other thing that I would point out to you here is that the hydrology division is requiring some kind of grading and drainage plan too, because you're presuming that that's also another change in the site that you're now creating two lots and you need to make sure that you're not going to be creating a drainage issue for one lot or the other. And so those those are the kind of things that we're looking to our engineering colleagues for. Um, but again, in terms of the the sidewalk requirement itself, my understanding is that's the review that transportation is doing, and those are those are to address the standards and development process manual. So the grade and drain analysis does that relate to the sidewalk, or does that relate to changing a lot line? That relates to the way that water is going to flow across the site when you change that lot line. That doesn't come near to responding to my question. I understand what a grading drain is for. My, my question is, why is the grading drain required um, when he's changing a lot? Is it for the sidewalk or is it for the, the changing it's, of the lot It's lines? to make sure that your, your water stays on your lot. Okay, so because he's creating two separate Because lots. he's creating two lots, so the, the current, you, we're looking at the current historical drainage pattern and if that's gonna change and create an issue for these two newly created lots because you want everybody's water to stay on their lot. That makes sense. And, and I know there's provisions in the IDO for that issue. Okay, so that, that answers that question, good. Okay, so it's not, for, it's not for the creation of the sidewalk, it's for the creation of the two separate lots. Yes, that's correct. Got it. Is there anything else, uh, Ms. Gould, that you, you'd like to add to the evidence in this? I, I think, I mean, I think, yeah, I think that's it. And I think I've, I've, I'm not sure what else I can add at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, Mr. Brito, are you on the line? I don't see him. He's there, he is. Mr. Brito? Yes, sir. Okay, is there anything else that you would like to add you are subject to cross-examination in just a few moments. Uh, Mr. Chavis, I just wanted to uh, reiterate that uh, this is an appeal of an EPC <clears throat> decision. Um, the EPC heard this appeal in February of this year. Uh, they denied the appeal um, and I want to state for the record that the EPC uh, did not act fraudulently, arbitrarily, or capriciously. Um, their decision was based on substantial evidence that's in the record, and the Planning Commission did not err in applying the requirements of the IDO or any other processes in the DPM or any other requirements such as the sidewalk ordinance. Okay, I have, I have a, a question since you brought that up. Mr. Chavez in his argument mentioned a resolution. I'm assuming it's resolution 035, 2019 035, which changed, um, which appeared to change the DRB's process and how it deals with discretionary matters. Is that the one that Mr. Chavez is refer referencing? Um, Mr. Chavis, I, I believe you're correct. That would be Ordinance O-1935, an ordinance that um, has created interim regulations for the IDO to address um, a conflict uh, in using the term variance, uh, which didn't meet the uh, definition at the state statute level. And so the interim regulations adopted with O-1935 corrected that. And I apologize, it's not a resolution, it's, it is an ordinance, that's correct, okay. Okay, Mr. Chavez, do you have questions for Mr. Brito? Um, yes, I do. Um, if the city can ask uh, any property owner to install sidewalk, A, when was the ordinance adopted and why hasn't the city done that to uh, address the city uh, sidewalk problems citywide? Uh, basically, why hasn't the city sent out those letters to uh, address all those areas without sidewalk? Mr. Brito, do you understand the question? Yes, yes. Um, the uh, sidewalk ordinance 
um, and I'm just looking at AM Legal right now, uh, a 6551. Um, uh, looks like it was adopted in 1972 and amended in 81, 1981 and 1989. And then again, with the adoption of the IDO, uh, the <clears throat> Department of Municipal Development often uh, does the enforcement action by sending letters to property owners miss that have missing sidewalks, uh, informing them of the requirements of 6551, the uh, sidewalk ordinance. Um, but um, it, it's, it's not a blanket or sweep. Uh, it's usually, in my experience, uh, related to projects that they are undertaking in the public right-of-way, um, or it's on a complaint basis. Um, <clears throat> also, um, <clears throat> I mentioned the catch point the development process <clears throat> through the development review board is another opportunity to enforce the sidewalk ordinance and get that required infrastructure installed. Mr. Chavez, any more questions? Um, you didn't really answer the question as to why they haven't sent it out citywide by, I'll pass. My next question, and I don't know if this would be for Mr. Brito or for Mrs. Gould, but um, I was told it was a resolution. That's why I used the language resolution. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know it was an ordinance, but it was adopted in May, I think, of 2019. Um, why was that not incorporated and addressed uh, prior to me applying? And why was it not addressed and applied prior to January 7th when I had the uh, meeting council with a land use hearing officer? Mr. Brito? Um, I can. Oh, uh, Ms. Gould? Sure. So, uh, again, the, the, the ordinance that we're talking about is, is the one which clarifies kind of the position of the DRB and how we behave and that we are not quasi judicial. Um, and that is an extensive resolution. Portions of that were, were amended back into the IDO and quite honestly, it was something that the staff missed. However, I think it's important to look at the criteria that was applied to Mr. Chavez's request, whether we are looking at it under- And that's the, Mr. Richard Chavez, not- Yeah, not. sorry, Mr. Richard Chavez, um, yes. Um, whether we're looking at that criteria as the waiver criteria or the variance criteria if you look in the record, there's a very nice chart that Ms. Wolfenbarger did that looks at how substantially similar that criteria is. So the way in which Mr. Richard Chavez's request was processed, that, that criteria isn't substantially altered one way or another, whether, whether we're looking at it under the way it was looked at first or the way it was looked at at, at Again, the, the bigger issue is that within that ordinance, appeals were, were sent not to the land use hearing officer as they are with most DRB cases, but they were sent back to the planning commission, which did delay Mr. Chavez's case right. and, and was definitely a staff oversight. And it sounds like an honest oversight. I mean, I've, I, stuff like that has happened before Mr. Chavez and I, I understood the, the problem. Um, go ahead, Mr. Chavez. Any any more questions? Uh, just one last question. Um, I'd like to know what the city's plan is to complete the sidewalk system in my neighborhood. Uh, and the whack-a-mole approach is not a plan. Uh, to wait for somebody uh, to possibly cut is not a plan. So what is the city's plan to install sidewalk in my neighborhood on my block beyond my property? Ms. Gould, only if you can answer the question, if, if that's not- So, your well, I mean, I can, I can answer that in two ways. One is as the city redevelops, each one of those parcels will be asked to provide the appropriate infrastructure. The second part is to say that the Department of Municipal Development does a decade plan and does a two year capital improvements plan. And also individual counselors have council set aside. And so through those processes, the sidewalk will be addressed. So what specifically will happen in Mr. Chavez's neighborhood? We would have to talk to municipal development and we'd have to talk to the capital improvements program. Okay. Mr. Chavez, more questions? 
No, sir, but I, I would just like to say that that's what I've been uh, advocating ever since I started this process. Um, it would be really easy for the city to set up a capital improvement program where over 10 years they expend $40 million or over 20, over 20 years they expend $20 million, and that would cover the $400 million shortfall that they're seeing right now. The process that they're using now, this whack-a-mole, it's never going to accomplish their goal. Is that that's all I have to say. Okay, okay, and that's your rebuttal, essentially. I mean, you do have 10 minutes for rebuttal of these issues. Is that what you're telling me you've used your time? That's correct, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Mr. Chavez, I, I will look at this very closely. Um, all these issues, including the, the, the ordinance, the sidewalk ordinance at 65-5-1, I haven't seen that yet, um, and I will, I will make a recommendation to the city council. My authority is advisory only. It's only advisory. It's not final. Uh, I do that within 15 days in a written document. I will send you a copy of that document as I send it to everybody else. And then you need to contact the city, um, the city council clerk to determine when and that person will be able to tell you when the hearing will be set up for this issue. Um, the city council will either accept, reject, or modify the um, recommendation from me. If they reject my recommendation, then what they do is hold a hearing for themselves um, in, very sim in a very similar format on your case, okay? Um, so you need to get with the city council clerk regarding that process. Um, do you have any uh, final questions? Question. Mr. Chavez? Uh, yes. Well, yes, so in contacting the city clerk, do I wait for your letter to before I contact them or when should I do that? Sure, I, mean, I, I, I will have a written recommendation within 15 days um, and then I, I send that to everybody including the city council clerk and, and then you can contact the city council clerk probably in the next week or so after that and she'll give you an idea on when the city council will take up the matter in a hearing. I think they have to take it up under the IDO within 30 days. I'm not quite sure on that, but I believe it's around 30 days um, that they have to hear, they have to decide whether they're gonna accept, reject, um, or modify that, that recommendation, okay? Thank you. Thank you, folks. I appreciate all your time. Um, enjoy your, the rest of the day. We'll go off the record now, bye-bye. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.